Okay, uh, we're very happy to have uh, Alessandro Berducci um, here to speak on uh, provability logic models within models in piano arithmetic. Go ahead, Alessandro. Okay, thank you, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank to uh, Roman and the uh, organizers of this cycle. So this is just really a very little note, uh, essentially about <laughs> formalization. Is there is nothing deep going on here? Um, I have. Uh, I was uh, intrigued. I mean, it has been really many, many years since I did. Uh, I, I worked on uh, on arithmetic, so I was um, working on probability logic and interpretability logic in my PhD thesis with uh, Solvay. But then, uh, since then, uh, well, I did some more work on uh, fragments of arithmetic. But then, since then, I left completely the field. So I and I didn't catch up. I mean, I, so now I'm a bit coming back, but probably I'm going to see something which is really easy for the experts. Uh, it's, it's just essentially a exposition of uh, uh, Gödel's second non-standard exposition of Gödel's second incompleteness theorem. Well, we were uh, uh, we started with uh, we were inspired by Yax. Very nice proof of Gödel's second incompleteness theorem for the Romero Frankel set theory. So uh, I'm happy the, that uh, Thomas is here. So Jack uh, showed that uh, by model theoretic means that uh, the Romero Frankel doesn't prove that the Romero Frankel has a model without using, you know, any notion of uh, syntactic proof rules of inference just just like that purely a purely model theoretic statement and then we wondered whether we can do something similar for pa and actually yet himself in his paper makes a remark about it and actually one can derive on some kind of incompleteness for pa using some conservativity result passing through second order arithmetic but we wanted a, a direct approach avoiding uh, uh, syntactic notions of any kind of uh, conservativity results. And of course, the difficulty is that uh, you cannot directly speak about models of PA within PA. So, but then there is an obvious idea that comes to mind that of working with models of bounded complexity, taking advantage of the fact that uh, you have uh, partial truth predicates for uh, um, for piano arithmetic. And so we wanted to prove uh, an assertion of the form, uh, the fact that PA doesn't have a, a model, say, of complexity sigma 0, 2, which actually it's equivalent to delta 0, 2, since the negation will be also close, it will be close under negation, then uh, is independent of PA. Um, so the question now to make this precise, we should say essentially what is a sigma zero two model. And there are several options that uh, come immediately to mind. Well, first of all, why sigma zero two, not sigma zero one? Well, of course, because by Tannenbaum's theorem, you cannot hope to have to, to, to show that uh, if an extension of a consistent extension of PA as a model, then it has a sigma zero one model. Well, so what is a sigma zero two model then? And we want to prove this model theoretically. Well, the first attempt, well, the naive attempt, which is wrong, is to say that a sigma zero two model is a model, countable model, so without loss of generality, the underlying set is just a set of natural numbers. And the addition and multiplication are defined by sigma zero two predicates. Well, this would include the standard model, of course, but it doesn't work. No, this, and the problem is that uh, in this way, 
there is no hope you can uh, quantify over such models of PA within PA. You need additional constraints. I mean, the problem is that the standard model has these properties, but its truth predicate is not arithmetic. And if you are in a context category of models, which is not uniformly of bounded complexity, you cannot quantify over them. Then uh, the, the, the second uh, attempt is to say that you identify a model with a complete theory, the complete theory of the model. So you say that a sigma zero two model is a maximal consistent extension of PA such that uh, it's, it's a set of formulas, it's sigma zero two definable. Well, we discovered that, that uh, Kotlarski had, had actually already done this and uh, uh, adapted some form of Gödel theorem in this form, uh, more or less following uh, the path opened by uh, Thomas. But still, also this approach still is proof theoretic. So you need maximal consistent, syntactically consistent extensions. Uh, Alessandro, right. you know, can I ask you a question at this point? I uh, sure, I, sure. I'm actually thinking of because um, you know that because what I learned uh, about this model theoretic proof of second incompleteness that's apparent due to Kreisel. Uh, right, that, right. right so, to, so, also you're going to say something about it? I'm going to say that okay. uh, something at the end. Okay. Uh, actually, Kreisel's proof, which which actually there is an exposition by. Uh, Putnam, uh, if it's this what uh, you are referring to, is, is that uh, what you are thinking about? Well, the, the, this is something that's also in the book of, uh, of Zosia Adamovich and Paweł Zbierski, and I know uh -huh. it's Smorinsky. Smorinsky also has an outline. That, that That's the one that you sort of, you need to, when you look at the proof trees and then and, and sort of, you know, second incompleteness theorem through through arithmetized completeness. When you show, you, you try to, assuming PA is consistent, you iterate and you run into, into after finitely many steps into inconsistency, very similar to Yeh's proofs, but more technical. But is it still, uh, is it, uh, do you use this as arithmetized completeness theorem yes. or not? Yes, it does. So it, so it is still uh, syntactic, right. right? Right, right. Yeah, but uh, I'm going to mention at the end, uh, although I didn't, I don't have a slide on it, there is a really nice, very, very nice proof or attributed to um, Kripke, which is better than that. It's, uh, I'm going to say something at the end. Can uh, I just ask a, a more basic question because I'm sort of a sort of right. a student? Um, right. So, I mean, so you mentioned uh, Tannenbaum, right? And I mean, I know, I know the result and, uh, and maybe read the proof. But let me think, that's about recursive models, right? Now, is that direct do you need do i need to do anything to get from that i mean i mean what recursive recursive corresponds to uh i mean sigma one is going to be re but maybe the, the yeah yeah the, yeah the, the point is that uh, uh here i wrote sigma zero two but i could have written delta zero two because this set right. is closed under negations if okay I, but when you made your comment that there's no sigma Zero no, one no, no, no. Well, yeah, that, to me, that's about delta zero one, but delta zero one, delta zero one. But in this context, sigma zero one is equivalent to delta zero well, one. Okay, okay, just because somehow because of the nature, if I were to think about the formulas, because of the nature of it, it's order right. the negation is automatically equivalent. Okay, that's what I was hoping. Okay, thank right. you. Right, right. So anyway, we want to do something different from uh, from this. And uh, uh, so the, the final attempt, uh, the, the, the final choice that what we are really using is, but somehow I'm not seeing, uh, um, maybe I should make this smaller because, can, can you see the full slide or, uh, till the end? No, you see my screen. So there is something wrong with, uh, let me try to, um, hmm. I'm not sure. You see the full slide till the page number, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, now we see. Oh, okay. 
So um, then uh, the idea is to work with formulas with parameters, not with complete theories, but in some sense with uh, elementary uh, diagrams. So you include parameters. And why that? Uh, because once you have parameters, is you can uh, you can use Tarski's truth conditions uh, in, in some sense satisfaction classes, so you don't need to speak about syntactic consistency. So but let me make it more precise. So you have a model of PA, countable model, so with, you can assume that the domain is just a set of uh, natural numbers. So you say that it's a sigma zero two model if the set of pairs, formula, code of formula, comma, environment, the environment is the list of parameters, the code of the list of parameters, such that uh, the formula with these parameters is true in, uh, in, the, in the model is uh, sigma zero two or equivalent with delta zero two definable. So it can be defined by a formula of complexity sigma zero two, can be defined in the standard model. So in other words, you have that uh, in the model, the, 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 you have this formula theta, which is sigma zero two, and you have that uh, in your model satisfies phi of uh, s, if and only if theta holds of uh, phi and s in the standard model n. OK, now, so, um, now you take a universal sigma zero two predicate, and now you take the code of the formula theta, and then you can think of the code of theta as the code of M, right? So then you may say that uh, in the model M, in the sigma zero two model, phi is true in the environment S, if and only if, the universal uh, sigma zero two predicate holds of the code of the model, the formula and the environment. And so you have uh, managed to code the models with a single, with a number. Uh, okay. So now we want a uh, next level of formalization in some way, we, we want to speak about non-standard, non-standard models, right? So, so far we have uh, this uh, this equivalence that I already wrote in the previous slide, wh where M is an actual model in the meta theory, and M is its code, which is a standard number. But now we want to allow M everything to be no standard, M, phi, and S because we, we are going to speak about models inside models. So then you need to formalize, to push the formalization a bit further. And you soon you discover that there is a pi zero three formula, model M, which says that M is a code of a sigma zero two model. How do you do that? You simply say that model M simply says that the set of pairs, formula, environment, such that U was the universal sigma two predicate, U, M, phi, S. So this set of pairs satisfies Tarski's truth conditions. So that, that means, well, I forgot to say, you also need to say that, uh, uh, so it's the elementary diagram of a structure. And I forgot to say that you also need to say that it's the elementary diagram of a structure of a model of PA. You have to include the axioms of PA. Um, so I hope this, this is clear so far. So you have a... Uh, right, so ju just, to, just to clarify, right? So phi there, I mean, phi there is written without a girdle number, but it's to be understood as, as an element of the model, which, uh, you know, via girdle encoding represents a possibly non-standard formula, right? And S right, is right, a non-standard, right. rep re representing a, non a possibly non-standard uh, uh, finite sequence of parameters in that model. But it's all, but it, but these are all just, yeah, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Everything, okay. so phi of, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Everything must be, so PA, yeah. It's, this is a definition within PA. Mm -hmm. Within PA, you can, uh, 
produced. Right, right. We're with some sort of thought out in the meta theory, we can interpret this as in some sense, right, codifying being a model. And now you're going to maybe compare and contrast this to the other ones. Right. Very, very so interesting. Then, so then uh, if uh, in, a, in a context in which model M holds, M could be non-standard, you know, we are inside a non-standard model now, then uh, as an abbreviation, uh, we are going to write little m satisfies phi of s instead of uh, u m phi s, u was the universal uh, sigma two predicate. But this universal sigma two predicate is not very significant unless you know that little m is a model in the sense that uh, you have this Tarski Sturz condition. I mean, the reason you get pi zero three is that just the, the, quanti the additional quantifiers that you need to express Tarski's truth conditions make you jump in uh, one level of complexity. You have uh, you are speaking about sigma zero two models, but then uh, you 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 need pi zero three to quantify over uh, formulas uh, and uh, parameters and so on. So you get this notion. Uh, now. Um, and, 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 okay, now the, the idea is now in, in usually in uh, so-called probability logic, you have uh, the model operator box, which is usually interpreted as syntactic probability. Now box phi usually is interpreted as phi is provable in PA, formalization of this fact. Now we want to change the interpretation of the model operator and you want to redefine it as a pi zero four formula now becomes a one higher level of complexity. Pi zero four formula, which says phi holds in all sigma zero two models of PA. So as you see, there is an extra quantifier here for all M. No? So box phi, phi could be no standard, M could be no standard, everything can be no standard. This is a definition inside PA. Box phi says for all M, if M is a model of PA, then for all environments S, but the environment is useless if phi is a closed formula without three variables. So uh, phi is true in the in the non-standard non -standard model M, so to speak. So this is the interpretation of box. And uh, it, it has been defined without referring to any proof system at all, right? Uh, okay. So uh, now let me make, just for uh, the students, <laughs> uh, a little digression uh, about uh, Kripke models. So as you know that uh, in Kripke semantics for probability logic, a model formula is valid if it's true in every well-founded uh, transitive Kripke model. Actually, it's enough to restrict yourself to finite trees. If it's true in all finite trees, irreflexive finite trees. So for instance, in this tree at the root, of this tree, you have uh, you have this formula which is valid at the root because uh, diamond A means A is consistent, so it, it's true somehow in a model accessible from the root on this right hand side, and also it's necessary box that B implies the consistency of non A, so. At, at every node below the root, accessible from the root, if B holds, B holds only here, then if B holds also the consistency of not A holds. So somewhere below you have also not A. So this is just a reminder of Kripke semantic. And, and it's true that um, it's well known that uh, if you interpret box as probability and diamond as consistency, then uh, the, the and A, B, A, and A and B are just uh, uh, 
arithmetical formulas, then uh, the things which are true in all Kripke models are exactly those which are provable in arithmetic uh, in this uh, in this interpretation. So, well, why may I, say, may I ask by, by provability logic, do you mean GL specifically uh, or? Yes, yes, uh, the GL, G, I think it's okay. called GL, I call, I used yeah. to call it G, G for Gödel, Gödel logic, yes. Exactly. Right, Gödel Walsh logic, yeah, okay. Gödel logic for, uh, okay. So, well, it's, of course, it's tempting to interpret the nodes of the Kripke frame as models of PA. And uh, so our interpretation of box phi as truth in all sigma zero two model is in line with this intuition. So it's much better to think of uh, Kripke semantic thinking about models of PA as nodes. So this is one uh, additional motivation, intuitive motivation for considering this new interpretation of the box. Alessandro, okay. yes. how, how do you access one model from another model? Um, well, uh, if a model A thinks that uh, um, satisfies the formula uh, model B, I mean, through the... I see. Right? You, you have a model mm -hmm. X in which the formula model Y is true, right? Right, right, right. I see. So, so what, what is what the model sees? Yes, yes, exactly. The model sees the model's which it believes are models, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, exactly. So this is the intuition to keep in mind. Does the set uh, of all um are, are the are the worlds here the um the all sigma zero two models? Yes, yes, okay. yes. I mean this is a slide which is really just there for intuition is not, uh, I, I didn't do any formal work on these Kripke models in the paper that I'm speaking about. It is, it's just there for additional intuition on this interpretation of the box. You, you may do whatever you want with it. If you are familiar with uh, probability logic and Kripke models, it may be useful for the intuition, but I'm not going to use this. So, um, Anyway, now let's come to the derivability conditions. Everybody knows that the proof of uh, the Gödel's second incompleteness theorem, I mean, Gödel's second incompleteness theorem can be expressed in uh, as the improbability of not box bottom, right? Because not box bottom means the, the, the consistency of PA if you interpret box as probability, but also if you interpret box as we did. And uh, uh, regardless of what interpretation you give of the box predicate, you can interpret box as whatever you want. If one, two, three, four holds, then uh, you will uh, be able to derive the independence of uh, not box bottom, right? So the task now is, this is what we really want to do. The task is to show that these properties, one, two, three, four, holds for every arithmetical, in, in, in our interpretation of the box, for every closed formula phi and psi. So, um, well, in some sense, I, I see. So this is this is sort of like a non-standard interpretation of GL, right? It, it, I mean, there's the interpretation of GL that comes up in the uh, Solovey arithmetic completeness theorem, I think, right? But this is yes. different, right? Yes, actually, in Gödel's logic, you have an additional axiom, which is expressing Loeb's theorem, right? Which is box of uh, box A implies A, close parenthesis, the whole thing implies box right. A. Right, oh, I see, we don't have this here. Well, you, you don't have this, but 
but it's contained somehow in the left. It, yeah. it, it can be uh, derived if you because you've derived. because you've assumed four something something but, from four plus well, one two. Uh, one. I'm not sure four is needed. No. Oh, okay. What is needed is the, the the fixed point theorem. I mean, in uh, in arithmetic you have the fixed point theorem for free. In modal logic you don't have the fixed point theorem for free. So if okay. you if you want uh, through the fixed point theorem, you can also uh, derive Lebesgue's theorem. But anyway, uh, okay, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I understand that. But what you're saying is, there somehow you have to you actually have to reprove Loeb's theorem in a different in a different place. In a different yes, maybe yes, for, uh, for Loeb's for this in, this enriched enriched uh, language of arithmetic, Nate, or something. But right. Okay. But I mean, I could have added uh, Loeb's theorem, but uh, I was not thinking about one, two, three are actually the so-called uh, Hilbert-Bernays derivability conditions, mm -hmm. right? So from the Hilbert-Bernays derivability conditions, one can derive uh, Gödel's incompleteness theorem, second, Gödel's second incompleteness theorem. So if you have a predicate box, which usually it's Gödel's probability mm -hmm. predicate, and then you have to put phi under Gödel numbering. but Regardless of whether, inter of, regardless of the interpretation of the box, you can interpret it as probability or anything you like. If one, two, three holds, then uh, not box bottom is not provable. In, in other words, and if four holds, it's not even disprovable, right? So, uh, but I, I come to it next mm -hmm. slide. So, um, so far, let's concentrate on one, two, three. So, how do you prove one, two, three? In the classical setting, in the usual interpretation of the box as phi is provable in PA, then one and two follow from sigma zero one completeness because. PA proves phi is a sigma zero one predicate, which is formalized by box phi. And if it's true in the standard model, it's provable in PA for point one. Point two, then P, box phi is, a, whatever, regardless of the complexity of phi, box phi is sigma zero one under the old interpretation of the box as probability. Box phi is sigma zero one. And then it's well known that uh, if you have a sigma zero one formula, PI proves that uh, theta implies box theta for any, theta implies provable theta if theta is sigma zero one, right? So PI proves that every true sigma zero one formula is provable in PI. Um, of course, this you have, everybody knows this because uh, depends on the fact that uh, every the standard model is well some matter of initial segments, right? So uh, sigma zero one formulas, if they hold uh, in uh, in an in initial segment of the of a model, they hold also in the model. Then point three is some kind, it's a triviality, but it's uh, you need it, no? It's a formalization of modus ponens. And then uh, uh, point four is a kind of soundness. If box phi, if box phi is true, and box is interpreted as probability, then uh, phi is really provable. Everything holds in the st standard interpretation. Now we want to prove all this in the new interpretation of box phi as phi is true in all sigma zero two models. In some sense, you can it's trivial if you can by cheating, <laughs> because this what I call the new interpretation is actually equivalent to the old one. Because you can prove <laughs> actually in PA, but then you you but then you need to use the arithmetized completeness theorem to do that. So we want to avoid that, right? 
So we want to prove one, two, three, four in the new interpolation. And of course, we cannot use sigma zero one completeness because now box phi is a pi zero four. The complexity is much higher. So how you are going to, how do you go, how do you prove box phi implies box box phi? So you have a much higher complexity and you cannot uh, rely on the sigma zero one completeness. Okay, so then uh, here comes the model inside the model. Okay, now you have a, a model big X of PA, let's say with underlying set, the natural numbers, not necessarily a sigma zero two model, an arbitrary model. Given a, a point, uh, an element of the model, such that in the model X, it's true model Y, namely Y is a model inside the model in the Kripke frame is accessible from, from it, right? There is, so you, there is an actual model. So from, a, in, in some sense, the slogan could be a model inside the model is a model. So from a model inside a model, you can construct an actual model, which I call the Y to the X, such that in Y to the X, phi is true in the environment S, if in the outer model X, the outer model hat X thinks that uh, phi is true in the inner model Y. And uh, this would, uh, uh, this is required to hold for all phi standard because we are in the outer model. In the inner model, you could also speak about non-standard phi, but uh, you, you, you don't, you don't, uh, this equivalence doesn't capture the behavior of the inner model for non-standard formulas. But nevertheless, it's true because you, you can get this, right? Because you can simply define this y to the x as the model whose elementary diagram is the set of phi s such that uh, this formula on the right hand side holds. And so you only need to check that uh, the um, Tarski's truth conditions hold. And since they hold also for non standard formulas, a, prior, a, a fortiori, they hold for the standard formulas, right? So it's not difficult to do, to do this. Um, so they hold for no standard formulas inside. I mean, of course, there is some, uh, I mean, you have to be careful with formalizations. Now you also need a further step of formalization. Now, big X, if big X is not an arbitrary model of PA, but it's a sigma zero two model, then it will have a code little x. And then it turns out that uh, you, you will be able in this context to, so no, now you have little x and then another little y, a model inside the model, both could be non-standard, right? non-standard, non-standard models, but you can build let's say an outer model y to the x, which does the same trick as above. So it's just a, a further level of formalization. You, 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 can, you can do this. So from a model inside a model, you can construct a model, even if everything is non-standard, right? Okay, so this holds probably in PA for all X and Y. So X and Y here are variables. So probably in PA for all X and Y, if X is a model and Y is a model inside the model, then you have this equivalence. Okay, this, if you, this is the trickiest part, but uh, to, to do, if you want to do it actually, in some sense, you may say it can obviously be done. I mean, it's enough to be able to formalize things. We actually did it in, 
full detail. And so it's an exercise in formalization. Let, let me just give you some uh, hints about the missing details. So as I said, it, it's nothing deep. It can be obviously done. To do it, you have to be careful because dealing with parameters, it's a bit tricky because you have uh, three kinds of objects. You have formulas and numerals. Formulas and numerals are descriptions. They have a different meaning in different models. So uh, if you say two plus two equal four in, uh, in one model has a different meaning, meaning than in another model because the, the definition of uh, plus changes. Then you have parameters. Parameters are not descriptions. Parameter are what Kripke calls rigid designators. So two means two, it doesn't mean one plus one. So, and you have to pass parameters from the other model to the inner models, not descriptions. And then you have formulas with parameters. And the trick here, <laughs> what is really nasty is that uh, you may have a non-standard number of parameters. So you may have a formula, non-standard formula with a description of a sequence of parameters. So to deal with this, it's a bit a mess. So if you have a, a no standard formulas with a no standard number of parameters, you have to pass this information from a model to a model inside the model. And so you need the three different functions. The identity function to pass the parameters because parameters are names. They are what Kripke calls rigid designators. Then uh, another function for descriptions, for instance, numerals or formulas. In some sense, this takes the number n and produces the Gödel number of uh, the numeral of n. But n could be no standard, the numeral could be no standard. So and this is x dot. And then you have uh, a third function, which is for environments. And this is the new thing, probably. It's just too messy. I don't think that anybody <laughs> did this. Uh, this uh, it, it's just too messy because what is what is an environment? An environment is a sequence of parameters. So it's a description of uh, objects which are not descriptions but are parameters. And this sequence could, could have no standard length. And you, to be able to pass this information from the outer model to the inner model is a kind of a mess. In some sense, you, you need to pass from uh, the name of a sequence of names to the name of the sequence interpreted. I mean, I'm not going to discuss this, but just so. In quantified probability logic, there is already some of this. There is the, the second item has already been present in pro quantified probability logic. Quantified probability logic, you have things like for all x box a of x dot. So you don't want to put you don't want to put everything in the scope of the box inside Gödel numberings, otherwise you cannot, otherwise the quantifier will not, will have no effect. So you need the, for all, so, so given X, you have to produce the Gödel number of the formula containing the numeral for X, and then you put it inside the box. So here you have only the second item, the second aspect. Now, in this new setting, you have to deal also with passing the parameter itself, not the dot, not the numeral, but the parameter itself, which is the same, because all models are based on n. In some sense, if you, if you, build, if you think of the Kripke frames, all models of the Kripke frames have access 
to the same set of parameters because they are all based on n. But of course, the parameter three in a model could be one plus one plus one, and in another model could not be one plus one plus one. So as an as a numeral, as a description will change, but as a parameter will stay the same. Here is more complicated. In some sense, we have to deal with uh, things like for all x, box of a of x without the dot, but we also have to deal with things like for all x1, xn, box of a of x1, xn, where n could be non-standard. So we, we must be able to pass from the outer side to the inner side a non-standard number of parameters. But anyway, this is just to say that I'm not going to discuss details because formalization is a mess. But this is needed to be able to do to deal with models inside models. But now I can prove the derivability conditions. How do I prove the derivability conditions without the sigma zero one completeness? For one, so PA, PA proves phi implies PA proves box phi. So suppose that PA doesn't prove box phi. That means that there is a model of PA where box phi is false. Box phi means that phi is true in all sigma zero two model. So this means that there is a model big X of PA. And inside that model, there is a model small y where the negation of phi is true. Because if PA doesn't prove box phi, it means that there is a model in which box phi is false. That means that there is a sigma zero to model in which the negation is true. And psi is the negation of phi here. But then we know that uh, from a model inside a model, we can construct an actual model. And so we get an actual model of PA where phi is false, and we get one. And for two, as you may expect, we use the formalization of one. So now, now you work inside a model of PA. Inside a model of PA, you want to prove the implication box phi implies box box phi. Suppose box box phi is false. That it means that there is a model little x and inside that model, there is a model little y in which psi is false. Again, from it, you can construct an outer model, y to the x, in which phi is false. And so you get two. So I hope this is clear. This is why we need these models inside the models. The parameters are not needed here, but are there. They could be empty. Three is obvious, and four, and four is, four, I tell you, four is, I'm going to discuss about four later, because four is where the referee complained. I, I, I don't know if the referee is among the audience, but I'm going to say something about it. So in four, you have the following. If PA doesn't prove phi, then there is a model in which phi is false. But then it's well known that if a recursive theory has a model, it has a delta zero two model. So if PA, if phi, if PA doesn't prove phi, there is a sigma zero one model where phi fails. But then you may consider the code of that model. I'm, I'm sorry, could you explain again why that is? I didn't catch it the first time. Uh, why what? Well, the implication that about the delta zero two model, or I just didn't quite catch it. Which which number? One, two, three, or four? No, no. Start with just the, the proof of four. Four. Well, yeah. What you just what you just started to say, and I uh, uh okay. You off. Okay. Suppose, well, I'm going. I I have to prove the implication. Suppose mm -hmm. the conclusion of the implication is false. Mm -hmm. So PA doesn't prove phi. That means there is a model of PA where phi. Yes. This model can be taken to be. Sigma zero two. This is. Uh, let me right? see. Why is that? Is that why? Is, why is there? Well, see, why, why are you saying it could be taken to be sigma zero? Am I missing something easy or? Uh, well, let me say 
I, I'm going to discuss this later. Oh, well, that's I, the point you're going to discuss later. Right. I, okay. I'm, okay. Fine. I, but there is a point there. Okay. Fine. That's that's all. Well, that's well, well. In some sense, it's well known. It's it's well known, but the proof is proof theoretic. Right. Because you just consider. Well, again, I'm, I'm I'm the student, so I I didn't. I mean, I just. I don't really uh, know which things to be uh, worried uh, about okay, and which okay, things okay. not okay. to be. But I'm, no, but I'm glad I, I'm glad I caught a fine point. So or somewhat fine point. So that's well. I, I'll, I'll tell you the proof theoretic proof of this fact. You consider you you introduce Emkin constants. So then you consider the tree of finite consistence extensions of the PA plus not phi, and you take the leftmost branch and this leftmost branch will be a delta zero two branch and will produce a sigma zero or delta zero two model. Okay. What was the first part about introducing constants? Uh, well, because you you want uh, um, um, uh, the elementary diagram to be delta uh, sigma zero two, not just. Oh, uh, oh, so you want to be able to write down the elementary diagram. So you just give you some, you just uh, reserve half the girdle numbers, the even numbers or something like that. And you use those to code elementary diagrams. Right, right. right. Okay. Okay, good. So once you have this model, which is of complexity sigma zero two, the code of this model in will uh, will witness that box phi is false in, in the standard model. Like the standard model will think that M is a code of a model in which phi is false, so box phi is false. So this this is it. Uh, now, uh, okay. Uh, okay, once you have the derivability conditions, then you do the usual trick. You construct the, the, for the Gödel formula by fixed point, uh, G if and only if not box G. And then you prove that G is independent of PA and equivalent to not box P. This is just standard. It's the standard proof of uh, Gödel's second incompleteness theorem and the observation, which is that uh, to do to carry out that part of the argument, it's not important how you interpret the box. It is sufficient that it satisfies the derivability conditions, right? So no matter which interpretation. So then you get that not box both false is independent. And not box false in our context means there is, is there exists a sigma zero two model of PA. So the existence of a sigma zero two model of PA is independent of PA. Okay, now we thought we had finished when we submitted the paper, but then we had the following dialogue with the editor. And the editor said that the referee complained about the proof of condition four, namely the, the same that you complained about. Uh, that uh, and and then and then we ask, did they find a mistake? Well, no, but they say that you use the fact that if a recursive theory has a model, then it has a sigma zero two model. And then we say, but isn't this true? Just use Koenig's lemma to find the delta zero two path in the tree of finite consistent extensions, and then you put Ankin constants as as I just said. Well, the editor replied that the referee said that this uses syntactic consistency. So it's not model theoretic. But then we observed that we only use it in the meta theory. So we, had, we didn't use it in the definition of the box. I mean, it's, it's just a well-known fact that if a recursive theory is a model, it's a sigma zero to model. We usually use it at the meta theory, at the outer level, not inside. And moreover, this point four is only used for the easy part, not for the difficult part, is only used for the soundness. Is only used. I mean, we can show that PA doesn't prove its semantic consistency without point four. So point four is only needed to show that PA doesn't prove its inconsistency. Well, you can sort of believe it that piano doesn't prove its inconsistency. The point is that it doesn't prove its consistency, but there is no way. The referee, the editor was not happy. We were uh, getting upset. The editor tried to calm us down. But fortunately, the referee was very kind, <laughs> kind enough to provide some bibliographical pointers. 
And so the editors say, so maybe you can fix it. Well, uh, we tried to say that there is nothing to be fixed, but uh, we have to give up. Um, so we, uh, the situation became, uh, I, I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> we were very happy that uh, the referee um, provided uh, some additional uh, uh, suggestions to actually improve the paper very much. Uh, and, and I'm going to show you how, how to do it. So, but as I said, uh, so far, everything goes fine. Proof theory is only used to show that if I regard the theory as a model, as a the sigma zero two model, but the rest of it is model theoretic and everything works fine. But let's do this last, uh, let's, let's deal with this. Existence of sigma zero two models for, uh, uh, so we want to show model theoretically that if a recursive theory has a model, then it has a sigma zero two model. Well, I'm not completely happy with the solutions we found, but let me present it uh, nevertheless. As I said, proof theoretically, it's well known. You, you, you just use Koenig's lemma in the tree of uh, finite consistency, consistent extensions. And uh, if you get a recursive tree with an infinite branch, you have a delta zero two branch. This is what is needed. Recursive tree with an infinite branch as a delta zero two branch. Now, the idea is, as, as suggested by the referee, to construct models as limits of finite structures. So to remain in the, the model theoretic side. And actually, it's a very old paper, it's called 22. Very beautiful paper. Construct models as limit of finite structures before the completeness theorem, before everything. Okay, now a nice, but it's not enough what Scholem did for our purposes because he was dealing with a single formula rather than uh, an infinite set of uh, a theory. And moreover, he was dealing with formulas of the form for all exist. And he was not worried about elementary diagrams. So we, we need to work a bit more. But anyway, a nice way to formalize this notion is through Kripke's notion of fulfillment. And I'm going to present a variant of this below. And there are some complications because of what I just said. Okay, what is this Kripke's notion of fulfillment? So, some sense, uh, the origin of the idea is Scholem with this limit of finite models. Then it was formalized a bit more by Shela in 82. Uh, but then there is a fantastic paper of Putnam that you should all read if you didn't. But Putnam attributes the proof he presents to Kripke, but Kripke didn't publish it. And Putnam says, say the, since Kripke didn't publish it, I'm going to publish it. But it's Kripke's proof that Putnam is, is presented. It's, it's a fantastic paper. It's really the best proof of uh, Gödel's incompleteness theorem that uh, I, 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 I know. But anyway, because doesn't use proof theory, doesn't use self-reference, doesn't use anything. Um, but I, I don't have time to speak about it. So an N structure is a sequence of uh, relational structures, finite M0 of M, of MN, of length N such that mi is a substructure of mi plus one. Now, given uh, such an n structure and given i less than n and a formula with parameters from mi, I want to define this relation between uh, this sequence and the formula. Uh, this looks like a forcing relation. It's actually called the fulfillment, Kripke fulfillment. Well, it's a variant, our variant, I hope it works. So it's uh, it, it, each author has it slightly different. 
So uh, M upper I, so this, this I is upper index, not lower index. So it's not the ith model. M upper I should be thought as remove the first I uh, structures from the sequence. So M upper zero is M bar itself. M upper one, you remove M zero. M upper two, you remove, well, yeah, exactly, something like that. But anyway, so you concentrate on what happens beginning with MI, MI, MN. So at, let's, let's call it at level I. At level I, there exists phi is fulfilled in this, in this end structure. If either you are at the end, either you are uh, at the end, you are concentrating on, uh, on uh, MN, or uh, there exists a witness in the next level uh, such that uh, phi of A is fulfilled at the next level. Then for all, for all is slightly, is not dual, is slightly different. The semantic of for all is the for all x phi is fulfilled at level i if at all higher levels, for all higher levels there are, and for all witnesses in the higher level, it's fulfilled at that level phi of a. And then the rest is classical. Conjunction behaves in the obvious way. Disjunction behaves in the obvious way. Atomic and negated atomic formulas behave uh, in the obvious way. And negation is only applied to atomic formulas. So the what is the intuition? The intuition is that uh, the for all player can play wherever he wants. The exist player must reply in the next structure. So if for all chooses a witness in MI, the exist must find the chooses a parameter in MI, the exist must reply in MI plus one to find the witness. But if you are at the end, the exist player wins for free. So the strategy for the for all player is not to play at the end, because otherwise, not not even close to the end, otherwise exist wins. Well, I see that I have already, hmm, I'm not sure I should stop maybe, uh, maybe I, uh, I, I, I I'm I'm not the organizer, but I'm hoping this can continue. This is this is wonderful. I mean, yeah, yeah. various things I was reading for separate reasons a little over a year ago, and they're all coming together in what you're saying. And I would like to hear more. <laughs> well, if uh, yeah, we we can continue for um, how how long do you think you need to? Okay. Minutes, no, I think that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh... Then you define an omega structure is just uh, um, an infinite, you have infinitely many relational structures. And then you say that the formula is fulfilled. Then you change in the omega structure, you have to change the definition of the existential uh, semantic of the exist because there is no last structure. So you simply drop. The, the 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 first disjunct so uh, it's the same as before but if the struct if the if you have an omega structure of length omega then uh, simply everything as before and uh, the exist as to find the witness in the next level okay and then uh, if uh, i equals zero you you simply write that the formula is fulfilled in uh, m bar so of course, so you begin with the uh, M bar, then uh, the players start to play, new parameters are uh, go in the play. Maybe these parameters are not in M0, but are in M1, and then you have to move to M1 and so on and so on. 
Okay, this is fulfillment. Okay, what are the properties of fulfillment? Well, a formula is satisfiable if and only if it is n fulfillable for each n. So that, that's it. This is the key, the key thing. So everything is semantic here. Instead of saying satisfiable if and only if the negation is not provable, which is syntactic, you say satisfiable if it is n fulfillable for each n, which is semantic. And uh, why is that true? Because if it's n fulfillable, fulfillable for each n, an easy exercise using compactness shows that it's omega fulfillable. So it's uh, fulfillable in an infinite sequence of relational structures. On the other hand, it's also easy to see that if it's omega fulfillable, it is satisfiable in which structure the union of uh, the, the relational structures appearing in the omega sequence. And then one can also observe that if it's satisfiable, the, also the opposite is true. If it's satisfiable, it's omega fulfillable because if it has a model M, you, you may simply consider the omega sequence M, 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 M. You repeat the same model omega times and uh, it's omega fulfillable in that model. And if it's omega fulfillable, it's n fulfillable and n plus one fulfillable implies n fulfillable and, and so on. So there is this notion of fulfillable, which is very nice. Notice that despite the last item, if a formula is true in the union of the models, it's not necessarily the case that it's omega fulfilled in the sequence of those models even if the models are increasing because mi plus one may not be big enough to contain the weaknesses of formulas in mi. Maybe you will, will find the weakness, weaknesses in mi plus two, but nevertheless, so if it's satisfiable, it is omega fulfillable, maybe not in this sequence, but in another sequence. I mean, you have to renumber the, the stuff. Anyway, you have these facts. Now, now you have a kind of Lowell-Himes column, uh, downward Lowell-Himes column uh, theorem for this sort of uh, structures. So you, but it works for finitely many formulas at a time. So you have a finite set of formulas. You have uh, uh, an n structure. Recall that m0 is included is a substructure of m1, is a substructure of m2, and so on and so. You say that this is delta bounded if all the structures are finite and m0, the cardinality of m0 is at most equal to the number of uh, Close subformulas beginning with epsilon, uh, with the existential quantifier. So it's just big enough to contain the weaknesses of the existential quantifiers. So actually, it doesn't mean that contains the weaknesses. It only means that the cardinality is the same that you would need to contain the weaknesses. Just the cardinality may not con actually contain the weaknesses, just the cardinality. And mi plus one, the cardinality of mi plus one is bounded by, is at most, uh, well, it must contain mi, so should be at least the cardinality of mi, plus a certain constant of the cardinality of mi to the number k, to another constant, where c is the number of formulas in uh, delta beginning with an existential quantifiers, and k is the largest number of free variables in any such formulas. Now, I'm in a hurry, so I'm not going to discuss much about this. Just believe me that in a similar way that you prove the downward lowell i column theorem, you can show that 
if a formula is fulfilled in, uh, in an n structure, then it's fulfilled in a bounded, delta bounded n substructure. n substructure means that uh, you, you, it's the definition above. It's a uh, mi is a substructure of mi for each pi. So it's a kind of lower lamps column theorem. So the advantage is that now everything becomes finite in particular. So if, if it's satisfiable, it's omega satisfiable, but with infinite structures, but now, but now they become finite. Last two slides. So now you want to produce a tree of uh, n structures. So I, I have to define the relation of being a child. So the idea is, given an n structure, you are able to prolong it, to make it an n plus one structure, enlarge its domains, and also expand the language for technical reasons that you will see below. So now you consider an n structure, on zero and n, in a language L, and then an n plus k structure, you may think of k equal one, in a bigger language maybe. You say that this extends the previous one if M0 is a subtract is a reduct of a substructure of M0. M1 is a reduct of a substructure of N1, and so on until Mn. And then Mn, and then the other, the extra length structures here are arbitrary, right? And then uh, you also need the technical condition. This is initial if the domain of the last structure is an initial segment of uh, finite initial segment of the natural numbers, this is just needed to ensure that there are finitely many delta bounded n structures. So every delta bounded n structure is isomorphic to an initial one and there are finitely many initial ones. So now I can construct a tree of uh, such objects because now I want to prove the final result, which gives me everything. So if uh, something is unfulfillable for each n, it has a sigma zero two model, a recursive theory. So this was the, so in particular, if, it's a, if it has a model, it will it will be unfulfillable for each n, and so it will have a sigma zero two model. So you fix a recursively axiomatized theory. Take the first n axioms, T n. Let L n be the language of the first. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. What's L? What's L here? L. L is the I language. Say L theory. I, I guess you got lost. Uh, the language. The language. You may think of the language of arithmetic if you want. Okay, okay. Oh, I see. Okay, this isn't necessarily, necessarily like the language augmented with all of these special kinds. It might be, but it doesn't have to be, right? Is that uh, uh, right? Right. But uh, I, I will, uh, you will see at the end why I want, uh -huh. I need uh, a generalization of that. Okay, okay. But so let's take a recursive axiomatized uh, theory in any language. You take the first n axioms and the language of the first L axioms. Of course, if the language is finite, you may take Ln equal L. Suppose that, well, by assumption for each N, Tn is N satisfiable. Well, now what did they say? I mean, I, I'm sorry, when you say language is finite, yeah, I mean, I mean, but you still have uh, infinitely many variables, yes or no? Or does it not matter? Uh, well, the axioms usually are uh, uh, closed formulas, right? Uh, right. So the longer and longer ones require more and more variables. But you no, can no, also no, have no, copies. no. The, the variables don't count as a language. Okay. Okay. Fine. Just checking. The relational okay. symbols. And, okay. Uh, just number. Fair. Fair enough. Right. So suppose now that. Uh, uh, well, no, I'm. I'm not sure. What do I mean by unsatisfiable? No, I, I meant unfulfillable, probably, yeah. So the original theory is 
unfulfillable for each n. So in particular, the first n axioms are unfulfillable. So you have get uh, an n structure which is fulfills the first n axiom. Now you construct a finitely branching tree whose nodes at level n are the tn bounded. Remember the notion of uh, delta bounded are the tn bounded initial n models. These are just technical conditions that are only needed to ensure that there are finitely many such. So you have a tree and at level n, there are only finitely many nodes of the tree. And each node at level n fulfills the first n axioms and extends a node at level n minus one by definition of the tree. And the children are the extensions. So you have a finitely infinitely, an infinite finite branching tree as an, a delta two branch. Take the union of the models in that uh, branch. These are finite models, finite structures. Can be the, and the union is a model of T. Well, this is what I don't like. It's a model of T whose atomic diagram is delta zero two, not the elementary diagram. How do we deal with the elementary diagram? Well, now it's not elegant. I'm sorry about that. I couldn't find, uh, we couldn't find a better solution. Well, by expanding the language, and this is where we need L to be larger than the language of arithmetic. By expanding the language, you can introduce a definition for every formula by a new predicate symbol. By expanding the language, you can reduce to the case in which T has effective elimination of quantifiers. And so in this case, the elementary diagram, if the atomic diagram is delta two, the elementary diagram will also be delta two, and that's it. So there is this, and, and uh, I have uh, finished, sorry to take uh, so long. Um, but anyway. All right, thank you very much. Let's, uh, let's all thank our speaker. Um, uh, you can use your emojis or you can unmute and clap if you like, but let's thank our speaker. Okay. Um, and um, happy to open up for questions or Comments. I I do have some things to say, but maybe I'll allow the others to chime in first. So just just to clarify the the uh, <clears throat> references here. So this the, all the, the last three uh, slides where you, you present this whole whole constructions of fulfillability. Is it all in Putnam's paper? No, no, no. This is this a reconstruction of what? No, no. Okay, this is close to. Shella's paper. It's a uh -huh. variant of Shella's paper. Right. No, no. Uh, it's a pity. Shella's proving the girls of completeness theorem, or he's doing something else. No, 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 no. He no. He, he does uh, something else. Uh, well, he does uh, things very complicated, much more complicated than this. Uh, well, in particular, he proves uh, the independence of. Uh, he proves the parent. Well, in in few lines. He proves the independence of the parent Harrington uh, result. I see. And uh, and then, uh, well, it's Shella's uh, style, uh, so uh -huh. you need to work on it. Uh, but <laughs> then it goes on. Uh, I didn't. Read... Scholem did something more basic. No, um... no. Well, Scholem actually didn't have. Uh, Scholem only dealt with the. Uh, Single for a single formula for all right. exist. So he only need uh, he didn't he didn't really need all this machinery. He uh -huh. just simply said uh, that uh, if for all mm -hmm. chooses in uh, M i exists chooses in M i plus one, but didn't really have a notion of fulfillment. Putnam mm -hmm. has a special case of this fulfillment uh, stuff, in which all the M i he works inside the, the natural numbers and all the MIs are uh, initial segments of the natural numbers in Putnam's paper. Mm -hmm. So it's a special case of this. Mm -hmm. So he, he simply replaces, so he has an arithmetical formula 
for all x that exist, y for all, uh, and it, it simply replaces all the quantifiers with bounded quantifiers. So if you put, uh, and this bounded, this bounds on the quantifiers implicitly define the MN uh, structures are just the, the, the initial segments of the numbers less than uh, the, those bounds. But anyway, Putnam, Putnam's papers, if you don't know it, it's really a must. You have to read it. because uh, the, the reason I, I'm asking it, uh, it's a pity that Corey Schweitzer, who, who used to be a student at the Graduate Center here, this was one of his uh, semesters when he was studying Shalas paper. And he, he actually uh, wrote the details of his proof of the independence of Paris Harrington, but we could never really figure out all the details to the very end. There are always some doubts remain. Now, the big result in, in Shalas' paper is this pi zero one combinatorial independent statements. And I think no one has really read the paper until the very end to, to make sure that they, actually the result holds. Don't <laughs> quote me on that. So I just wondered whether you did. But... Well, well uh, not quite. <laughs> I arrived more or less at the Parrington Harren. I arrived to the Parrington Harren right. conversation. That, that part, right, because that part we could, you know, Corey also figured out too. And what, what you were talking about here at the end was sort of very, very sort of reminded me of much of the work that needed to be done. But, yes. that, that, but there were still some questions lingering. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah. the main, the main result. So that that was going to be my, my comment is actually that Corey, um, uh, as as Roman mentioned, he actually gave a series of talks on this at at MOPA back when it was in person. Um, I I don't remember if he ended up giving the the uh, sort of the same talk uh, online, and so I don't know if it's recorded uh, or not. But he 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 gave he gave a talk on on this notion of fulfillment. Um, uh, a, a several a several times. Uh, you know, it was. It was really it, it was really interesting. I, I I do I do remember that the paper that he was writing up never he never ended up uh, publishing it. But so I don't I don't know uh, what the status is there. But no, because there are still questions about the proof being you know that all, all the details being correct. Right. Well, I definitely want to read it. But there, some of you read the uh, Putnam's paper. I haven't seen it. Well, Putnam's paper is fantastic. It's ah. really fantastic. It's uh, it's the best proof of Gödel's incompleteness theorem that I have ever seen. No, but look, I like very much Kreisel's uh, proof, which is very kind of again, it's sort of models within models are there because you know it's really the yeah, style. If you have you seen the Kreisel's proof? Well, uh, maybe not, maybe not. No, no. Yeah. So the thing is that you, you you assume that PA is consistent, and then you have this by arithmetic completeness theorem, you have this arithmetic uniform procedure of constructing end extensions. Right. And you do you di diagonalize against the, the, the definition of the model that you're getting? So showing that ev every time you get a non-conservative extension, so there is this one sentence that changes its value, truth value, when you go from one model to the other. But because yeah. you change the truth value of a it sounds, sentence, it sounds a bell. It sounds a bell. It's definitely yeah. Right. I... right. And then so 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 in in the so this is it's on the finite level of this tree. Of of, of uh, the extensions, so you go to the left all the time, but you're forced to move further, further to the right, and at the end, you stick, you you, you hit the wall. So I, I thought it was a very beautiful proof, but it pro uses the full power of the of the arithmetic completeness. But does it use fixed points? Uh, well, it's only for the the, the general you know, the, the the diagonal argument for the sentence that's equivalent to its truth in the model. Hmm. Well, maybe it's related to what Putnam does somehow. Uh, Putnam uses overspill and uh, but uh, and then and, and ultra powers. Um, and it's also a kind of um, minimalization. Somehow he considers the smallest omega structure, which is a model in some sense of the smaller. And then uh, it shows that he can produce a smaller one uh, if if the theory is consistent, something like that. Yeah. So, you know, I, I wouldn't claim that that uh, Kaisler's pr uh, proof is the simplest, but it's really very beautiful. That's uh, yeah. and it's very model theoretic. Yeah, yeah. No, well, no, sorry, I didn't want to. Uh, this, I mean, I didn't. 
I was so enthusiastic about Patnam that. Uh, no, said, no, very, very, very right. So we have to see. We have to I, see. I this. said, I said, I, I mean, I, I take it back. I don't want to claim <laughs> that is the best proof. No, 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 no it, could, it still could be the best. I'm not arguing against it. No. <laughs> okay. I know. I know. I took up a lot of time. May I ask one more question? This has just been so exciting, right? So, I, I, for various reasons, I don't really remember. A little over a year ago, I was reading various papers. I know. I definitely read Thomas the X paper. I think there was something from Bulos, which uh, connected, and then I believe I may have read this Kudlarski paper. Uh, I don't not quite sure. But okay, with and now there's your work. Um, now, there are these fine point I've, I've caught some of them but maybe not all of them but here's here's my question okay so there's a a separate discussion which i learned on math overflow and uh, I, I learned it in, in one of joel hampkins uh wonderful posts he references somebody else for for one of the directions which i forget but it's essentially a, a, it's essentially something that says the following that um every model of zfc contains in some sense you know fine point which i think is morally like your containment okay, with a translation you know from uh, the the outer the the meta theory into the theory every model contains every model let me think every model of zf maybe it's zfc oh, it probably zfc contains a model of zfc right and this, you know there may be some coding there um right right but it uh, the thing is the fine point the fine point is um so the I mean the proof basically splits into two cases and there's I mean the, the, rather than overspill there's the reflection principle and there's um there's one there's you do one thing if the original model is non-standard and uh, you do another thing if the model is standard and the point is you're not actually pr um, proving the one formalized assertion uh that the thing is in other words it, I mean it, it's not necessarily a model with respect to non-standard formulas right but it is a model with respect to the original right. Um, I'm maybe not saying this properly, but do you have a, do you see what I'm getting at? And does that have a, can that be, obviously it's not true in your context because N, right? I mean, N, N does not contain anything which 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 seems to me to be co coding. Um, anyhow, or maybe I should, maybe I should write to you privately and just send you that link of Hamkins. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, completely sure I got the point. Uh, yeah, I'm being confused, let's see if I, Let's see. Uh, can I maybe jump in? Yeah, maybe maybe someone else knows this and can say it better. Cameron, you, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I know of the the argument from Hampkins. I yeah. don't know where it's originally from, but I think it should also apply in the context of arithmetic. Uh -huh. The dichotomy that he looks at is either your model of ZF thinks ZF is consistent once it has a model it can see. Or if it thinks it's inconsistent, you can still kind of overspill because the standard parts are consistent. So you can overspill to some. That's right. That's right. And then you actually recover all the standard. Thank you so much. That's yeah. Exactly. And the same argument should work in the arithmetic case, modulo the details yeah. of how you talk maybe about models and things. What... But that's what this whole talk was about. Right. Maybe this is closer to what Patnam does. Um, yeah. I... That would be interesting to understand. I mean, all of these formalisms are a bit beyond me, but so that would be interesting to understand. Uh, I just I mean, to what that means in terms of arithmetic, but which is the close, this is closer to, to Kreisel or to this, or in terms of uh, the, what, what's most analogous? Uh, which one? Oh, I don't know. I'm just, I mean, curious here, which, which version, when you say you could be, which, Cameron, when you say you, you should be able to do it with, uh, with, for arithmetic, is, it, it, would it be along the lines of one of these approaches like this, as discussed in this talk? Is this, I think does this suggest you have an approach to the same to sort of like um, disjunction. If your model thinks PA is consistent, then do this. If it thinks it's inconsistent, then do the overspill thing. And, and then it's, it's a matter of formalizing overspill here, thing. but I guess you can do that, right? Well, hmm. but you can do overspill in any case. So Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, any other questions or comments? Well, I, I had a small question for Alessandro. Yes. So the way I usually prefer to think about semantic notions in PA is I just work in ACA not, which is conservative for PA. You basically take the definable sets 
Yes. Can you cast this in kind of that framework and maybe avoid some of the technical complications? Um, it could be. I'm, I'm not really sure. Maybe, maybe this is maybe related to the remark of Yak in his paper when he proved the, the semantic, he gave the semantic proof of, uh, I mean, if you just want to produce an independent statement is one uh, problem. Mm -hmm. If you want to um, give an interpretation of the box, satisfying the, the reliability condition is something slightly different. So it's, uh, uh, so this is what we wanted to do, right? So we wanted a, a new interpretation some, somehow of probability logic. Of course, there are plenty of ways, model theoretic ways of, uh, even model theoretic ways to produce independent statements. Uh, somehow we were intrigued by giving a new interpretation of the box such that everything works fine with Kripke models and the probability logic. And we, so we were focusing on, on that. Uh, regarding whether uh, some of, uh, well, some of the things that I did, uh, that we did uh, simplifies if you go to second order arithmetic, I'm not really sure because there aren't really, I mean, we use partial truth uh, predicates and, uh, and not completely aware of any advantage that uh, we could have in passing through second order arithmetic in this context. Yeah, so I guess the only advantage is you have your like your models or actual objects, like uh, as, yeah, as opposed to this where you have less coding, right? Findable. It could be. It could be. You can avoid some coding, right? Yeah. So it's it's not like a, avoiding anything essential. It just I prefer to think less model yucky. theoretically, so it avoids. It's like lets me work directly model theoretically. It it may be. It may be. I'm I'm not really sure. Yes. But it could well be. Okay, awesome. Thanks for the answer. Um, okay. I, I want... please, please send me before we, we please send me an email with all these uh, references that I missed uh, about these uh, other papers of uh, Kreisel and uh, and so on. Cameron, you know, I mean, I can search out that link with Hamkins, right? Is if you go to Math Overflow and you search model model in a model ZFC, I think it just pops up because I've done that many times over the last like five to ten years, <laughs> okay. right? But okay. um, I mean, I can, I suppose I could do it again. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm 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 aware that uh, we may be rediscovering things which were already known in one form of another. Well, no, but it's a different context. At least to me, it's different enough. I mean, I'm just, it's, uh, um, because again, I mean, you know, the original proof by, by, by Yek, right? I mean, set theory has such incredible uh, expressive resources, right? I mean, that you get this completely natural formulation without any, any, any fiddly coding whatsoever. And then there are these other, oh, my cat Ruby came back. She loved the talk too. She was there all the way to the end. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. Um, let, let's thank our speaker again. Um, and yeah, again, that was a very excellent talk. I really enjoyed it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It was very nice to have such a reactive uh, audience. Uh, with, I, I forget, did, did you say there's a paper on the archive or is it just the slides at this point? Or uh, I mean, we have a, a, I have a paper with Marcello Mamino. Uh, well, but, that's right. You were talking about referees, so I guess it's 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 either published or in process at least, right? So no, this is already published. It's published. Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I'll just look for it. Then. But 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 the slides, this last part, this last part with this fulfillment stuff is not in the paper. Uh huh. I see. Okay. In, in the paper, there is a sort of simplified version of this. Mm. Uh, and again, it looks a little bit like forcing because of the uh, the way you have to define exists and for all separately. For yes. example, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, but it, there is some. It's intuitionist, maybe also. intuitionistic is a better. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but anyway, I can send you the slides. Uh, I mean, or I can uh, put. Uh, uh, maybe just when you when the talks posted, maybe just attach the slides to.
Could okay. you send um, the slides to Atar and he can post them on the uh, uh, site? Yeah, you can you send it to to me, or I'll send it at, or to Vika directly. But I'll 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 coordinate with with Vika. So. Okay, and yeah. uh, what what is the address of? Uh, send it to me as well. So. Okay. Send, send it to Roman. <laughs> okay. Um, and so okay, and I'll just announce that next week we uh, are off unless Roman has a last minute speaker that he wants to put in. Or somebody just volunteers to be. Uh, anyone wishes to volunteer? No. <laughs> well, and most of our potential speakers have left yes. already. Um, so then um, we'll reconvene in two weeks where um, I'm not seeing who, but we do have a talk scheduled for November 7th. So uh, it would be at the same time. Do you know? I'm really glad I actually okay. took the time to read the 